Welcome to Making It Pretty, a video series on permanent floral design featuring Matt Wood. In our first episode, we're introducing the Natural Stem Collection, and Matt shows how easy it is to combine flowers selected from the collection to create excellent hand-tied bouquets. You know, I think one of the easiest ways to create floral design is the hand-tied bouquet. We're going to use our natural stem collection with fresh foliages. But with this process, you'll see how easy and simple hand-tied bouquets can be. First, let's take a look at how our flowers are made and why they're the best permanent florals available. Well, the natural stem is absolutely the most perfect kind of material to work with. It's because of the, they can add the natural hand painting and even to the stems, add the, even the texture to it. I just think it's, it's uh, all us designers love it because it is the best. It's easy to cut, it's easy to work with, work in glass, work in foam, it's perfect. I think amazing things are done with this, this fabric to where they hand paint, hand curl, and hand, um, hand dye to get that different coloration to it. Even some of the petals are, are burned a little bit so that they curl up like in a natural foliage, a natural petal. I think another thing is our coloration on our flowers. Like I said, hand coloring, hand dyeing, but realistic to where they all blend beautifully together like in nature. Realism always works better. And, and in nature, if you study that and study the colors, they all borrow one from another to get that coloration in nature. The Natural Stem Collection from Windward is so beautiful. Windward's done their homework and chosen the best flowers in the best colors. Well, this collection, we have two collections, uh, colorations. We have the conservatory, which is all white and green. White and green is the most popular and the most sophisticated color palette. The conservatory is all white and green, and the garden fresh is multicolored. And we've taken the, the most popular flowers that we produce and the best colors they, they, that go together. It's a beautiful collection. Yeah. Here's Matt to show you how to combine permanent florals with some fresh foliage for a beautiful natural look. Creating hand-tied bouquets, so simple, so easy, and it's really almost like your hand is the vase. And I've chosen a beautiful um, uh, glass vase here, and we want to look at it and we want to create designs that are uh, this one is monobotanical, meaning one flower, one color. There's several shades, obviously, in the blue. Blue hydrangea is one of my most favorite flowers, and it's so easy to look at. We know we, we learned that in design about the round shape, and we know that this round shape is going to look excellent in this face. And I start off by holding my flowers and creating the design. Secret is that it is uh, crossing, and I give it a turn. Add another flower, give it a turn. Another flower, give it a turn. And you can still move. But by taking the zip tie, probably the hardest thing, just getting the zip tie going. And I love the zip ties because of the strength that you can get and, and very secure. Good wire, wire cutters that are, that are strong. So you can give a little bit of cut to that. Next, I'll take some twine. Tie it onto the bouquet. And wrap it around just for, me for uh, aesthetics, covering that very mechanical piece of plastic. And as I would like to talk about that I love gardening, I love foliages, and I love texture. I'm going to use fresh foliages with these. It's perfectly safe in the water as long as the foliage uh, are, is alive. And I can place this into my vase. Using garden snips. This is an excellent 
way to do for party work or for me, uh, for myself, I just do it at home all the time because I love the look of fresh foliages with permanent flowers. Use good hardy foliages like this. They're gonna last a long time. Just be sure and keep the water clean. This is a beautiful um, jasmine vine that you can add into it. You'll see me doing this a lot in these bouquets because I love the vining texture that you see in the garden. Try to keep as much foliage material from being in the water so they keep the water cleaner longer. And then you can create a beautiful hand-tied bouquet. Creating another style of bouquet is called uh, clustering or grouping. As you can see here, as in the hand-tied technique, I have zip-tied orange tulips, green viburnum. But look what I've done. Two different styles. One large, one more clustered, more grouping. But I think that the thing when you look at hand-tied bouquets, you've got to breathe life into them for this particular style bouquet. You can see what I've done by shaping like they're growing or falling from the vase. All I did was, was here was to put them all together, take a zip tie, snip that zip tie off, a little bit of twine. Once again, I do that just so it stays very organic and I don't see that black plastic. But you've got to breathe life into those flowers. No straight lines in nature. Like I said, the garden has always been my inspiration and I look at designs in and, and nature and there's no straight line. Breathing life into them gives them so much movement. That's the beauty of a tulip. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create more of a clustering asymmetrical design, obviously with beautiful green viburnum. We love this color green in nature, whether it's moss or Granny Smith apple growing on a tree, that color is incredible. Then I take those tulips, give them a nice bend and place them right on that same line. And let's add some uh, fresh foliages to this like we did before. I've taken this beautiful jasmine vine, very hardy. I know it's going to last, but I'm putting in that same position. And I think that's beautiful when you can add in fresh foliages to your permanent botanicals. Then I'll take this nice and I'll cluster it down low. And we call that asymmetrical. Very natural, very organic. But we could even add even more to it. If you wanted to add more tulips to have a larger hand-tied bouquet. But creating a, creating a hand-tied bouquet is not necessarily one bouquet in your hand. Look what I'm doing. I'm creating several. And you're, create, you're getting that same look. Again, look at the difference between this side and this side with the foliages. Let's add a little bit more. Makes all the difference. And great for party work or just for enjoying all the time. This type of bouquet is more of a European styling and it's what we always know as, as the nosegay. It's probably the truest form of a hand-tied bouquet. Uh, mon using mono botanical, one flower, one color, very traditional. And you can see how simple that is and how, how you know, easy to make. Same process of the hand-tied bouquets, but look when they're both put into the same vase has a very contemporary look, especially in this glass vase. I can show you that 
Prep work is the most important in creating this European style. I have cut every flower off of its stem just by going to the first right under the leaf. And it's important when you're doing a hand tie to get all your product ready. We'll cut a couple of viburnums. All laid out here in front of you. You begin the same way, crisscrossing, laying the flowers, turning. Adding a little green in there for a little separation. We all know that the, the most um, popular color scheme is a, is a monochromatic of all whites and greens. And from European styling, we learned about collaring. Then my foliages go right up underneath. And that creates a collar. Again, pull any foliages off so that you have nice clean underneath. Secure with the zip tie. And now look at your stems. Pull them all down and then we cut those all across, same length. And you can see how simple that a nosegay can be made. Okay, classic styling calls for a classic container. Can't get any better than this. And you know, hand tied bouquets just are a natural for, uh, hand, uh, for glass containers. Over here I have my flowers already separated, my mass flower, my filler flower, my accent flower in the roses, in the dahlias. But you know, you start off by taking the largest flowers. And I call this um, classic garden design be simply because, look, it looks like it's come from the garden. A couple hydrangeas, one green hydrangea, two roses, one dahlia, some filler of this beautiful viburnum, and some great um, ranunculus. So therefore it has a very mixed look. And I think if you work it like that, it's, it's beautiful. But I always start off with my, my mass flowers to give me that, that base first, holding it very loosely in my hand. And then you just begin by placing the flowers in different positions. Now, you know, working with twos is, is, is very unique. You tend to not separate them. You tend to put them together. They look better in your design. Taking a dahlia on the other side. Now I can come in here and add filler, which we love, again, the beautiful apple green. They're great separators for the two big flowers. And then by inserting these beautiful ranunculus, and everybody loves those because they are face flowers. They have little dots and they add so much uniqueness to the design. Here I'll put those two right in the center, more as an accent flower. And don't worry, on your hand tides, wait and shape it when you get through securing it with your zip tie. And I've mentioned before the zip tie, way different than wire. Wire has, we have a tendency to not to get it as tight as it needs to be and it falls apart. But zip tying that in, very secure. Clipping, make sure they're all kind of even across the bottom. And again, shape it once it gets into the bouquet. That could be a little shorter. So that's what you have to do. You can always take more off. Now that fits in there nicely and I look around and I see my, my main flowers are right in the top in the center. 
my mass is filling that in. Now I can come back and add my favorite, which is beautiful garden ivy. The vase has water. Look, look at what that green does to those flowers. It's a beautiful tree ivy. And work the foliages in between the larger flowers. And use just these around the edge to create that collar of green. Clip out what you don't like. And there you have a beautiful garden style design. Okay, for a change of pace with the hand tied bouquets, look at this garden design has a good bit of line material and what we know as delphinium, foxglove, anything with that produces a strong line. Very difficult to work into uh, obviously a tall container, but I'm going to deconstruct this for you and show you how easy it is with hand tied bouquets. Simple as that. What I did, I created, as we've done before, tulip, viburnum, very much a natural look. Took the line material of the delphinium and the beautiful Casablanca lilies. And again, breathe a little life into them. Give them a little, little droopiness to it so that it doesn't have a straight line. Placing that off to one side as we did with the tulips and the viburnum in that arrangement. But look at these single monobotanical hand-tied bouquet done in with the ranunculus. And we talked about that in, in one of the garden style bouquets that people love looking at little round flowers. And it's, this one's absolutely perfect in here. And it comes into the center. This is against everything we've learned in design, but it's all segmented, but it has a very garden feel. That's where mass flowers come in, or in our beautiful collection of hydrangeas. The collections have a white, a blue, and a beautiful green. But you can see, blue here, I'm going to come over to the side and just now add this into the design at the base. That's what mass flowers do. Same thing with the white. Put the white back over in here to bring that white from over here and then simple the green opposite there. All we're doing is giving weight to this line design. I think by when you look at something like this and you're adding fresh foliages to it, I think if you look at the collection of these natural stem flowers, the greenery is spot on. There you go. Garden peonies, I can't say enough about their popularity. Everybody loves peonies, obviously for the fragrance, but with our permanent botanicals, we've added a little bit of the pittosporum with it. And you know, with this look, this is probably one of the most romantic looks because of the coloration, analogous pinks, uh, the monobotanical also is that way. But look at the way they're designed because this is exactly how they act in, a, in an arrangement. Let's deconstruct it, remove the pittosporum, and look what I've done. I've created two cascades, and that's very important because we know the head of that peony is so heavy it's going to fall over. We love it because the back of our peony is just as pretty as the front. But if those are placed into there, 
opposite, across the way. Then I've taken two bouquets by three. Look, colorize them together, makes all the difference so that I can put pink right here, white back here, or vice versa. You can change it up all the time. This would be very difficult to make all in your hand at one time. You wouldn't get that flow and that beautiful uh, depth that you've created here or that natural uh, arranging of as if peonies were just thrown in a vase. I was told a long time ago, just make it pretty and pink peonies is definitely pretty. Well, you guys, you know I have to do this with being from Mississippi, but our beautiful magnolia. We used um, fresh magnolia foliage, just zip tying um, our permanent botanicals to that. I think it's kind of amazing. It, it shows um, how great our foliage is on the natural stem collection. Really, I think this is probably one of the most difficult flowers to design with because they're just beautiful you know, just laid out on a table, but I think taking this beautiful uh, wine cooler and attaching those to it, pretty cool. Because they do have a mind of their own, always growing back up. And this is absolutely perfect for party work, uh, whether it's holidays or it's wedding. This book, this foliage will last a very, very long time. And now we're adding these gorgeous blooms to it. Wow, hard to tell the difference. Pretty cool. Way to go, Winward. You know, I've, I'm doing this just as a hand tied and dropping this in water. Obviously you can do this with the floral foam in it. That would give you a little bit more stability. These are pretty strong flowers. So yes, floral foam would be a lot easier. But I think the whole process of taking of taking a real stem and attaching zip tying two permanent botanicals on top of it. Look at that bud, gorgeous. And you may have to put two in there so they don't spin around. Is that real or permanent? The foliage is is real. What about the butt? The butt is real. <laughs> beautiful. I know. It's beautiful. Look at that coloring. Yeah. This is fresh. This is permanent. But look at when these all start working in here together. Changing the water on it probably can be anywhere from two to every three days depending on what residue is left on the real stem. The real stem is what's going to um, dirty the water. But I wouldn't suggest any longer that just for the botanical stem itself, the permanent botanical, I wouldn't want to destroy too much of it, get it too waterlogged. But it's an it's a easy concept. Most of this is natural stem, which is a natural casing of, of, of PE plastic with paint on top of it, with a polymer on top of that. So it pretty much can withstand the moisture. Not forever. Okay.
love it. Done. Cut. Don't leave us just yet. Matt has worked up some more examples of great flower combinations from the Natural Stem Collection to show you. Each bouquet is easy to make, and you'll see the recipe that shows you exactly which flowers Matt used, so you can do the same. Enjoy, and thanks for watching Making It Pretty featuring Matt Wood. <laughs>